Play, LBC News. Now, Meta's being urged to have a rethink after it lowered the minimum age to use WhatsApp from 16 to 13 in the UK and the EU. Bosses insist protections are in place to keep people safe. Joining me now live on LBC News is Alice Hendy, MBE, founder and CEO of Ripple, the suicide prevention charity. Hello, Alice. Hello, good afternoon. What's your reaction to this decision, first off? Uh... The minimum age that's been reduced from 16 to 13 is quite frankly appalling. They're just far too young to be having this level of, of, of material or an access on WhatsApp. And also the, the latest news today that we've seen with some of the content on WhatsApp promoting the likes of suicide and self-harm is just devastating. And make no mistake, this is extreme content and our children shouldn't be subject to it. Uh, um, but it puts parents in a very tricky position, doesn't it, all of this? Hugely. Uh, WhatsApp is a bit of a different beast from other social media platforms because it contains end-to-end -end encryption, and that makes everything a lot more difficult. So, really, only the individual sending the message and receiving the message on WhatsApp are actually able to view the content. Not even Meta, who own WhatsApp, can see these encrypted messages so from a parental perspective, it's really a case of making sure that you're showing an interest in your child's use of social media, removing them from any potentially harmful groups that exist and reporting any concerns to the, the platform itself and even the police if necessary. And WhatsApp's owner Meta says all users have, and I quote, options to control who can add them to groups and the ability, as you say, to block and report unknown numbers. How, how can parents police that? It's so, so difficult for, for parents and guardians that these children shouldn't be being added to these groups in the first place. So the reduction of the age to, to you know, 13, children as young as 13 viewing this kind of extreme material on the internet is just horrific. The only thing that parents can do to try to mitigate this is to really keep a keen interest on what their young person is doing on social media, monitoring that and then taking appropriate action based on if they are actually subject to any of these groups. Do you think the Online Safety Act is doing a good job? Well, it was introduced to give regulators powers to ensure social media companies are protecting our children from harmful material. Uh, frankly, that's not what's happening at the moment. And if these organisations and platforms are not complying with these guidelines, then they should expect to be fined very heavily in the coming months. Do you think there's a corporate culture at these platforms that perhaps it needs to change from profit must be, or safety should come before profit? At the moment, it's the opposite. Profits are very much coming before safety and it needs to be completely the other way round. These organisations need to be doing more. They need to be being held accountable for their actions and safeguarding our loved ones from this material that they continue to post on their site. And can you tell me, if you if you would, why you set up the charity yourself? I'm pretty angry uh, with regards to, to all of this news today because I very sadly know firsthand the impact that this material can have on people. I lost my brother Josh to suicide in November of 2020. And that was partly due to him actually accessing material, in, internet content, uh, and accessing websites and platforms that hosted information that encouraged the use of self-harm and suicide. Mm. And that's what we're seeing today on these WhatsApp groups. And it's what needs to change. And do you find it fr frustrating, you, you're indicating that you do by the fact that this is still going on, that, that things aren't necessarily going far enough to, to change things? It just seems that nothing is changing. How many more cases are we going to see where we're losing young people to suicide in this way? And still nothing is being done by these corporate organisations and social media platforms. This is a, a pandemic in itself, if you like, and more, more needs to be done to safeguard both young people and adults from this material that is continuously existing. One of the ways that parents can also do this is actually by deploying the Ripple Suicide Prevention technology for free at home 
which ensures that if any harmful material is being searched for on the internet, Ripple can safeguard, uh, interrupt that search and instead signpost them to mental health support services instead. Thank you very much for joining me live on the programme this afternoon. Alice Hendy, MBE, founder and CEO of Ripple, the suicide prevention charity.